This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I saw many people walking on their own paths of life. Many different people with uh, their full world surrounding them. And I realized that we might walk in the same street, we might drive on the same road, but actually we live total different lives. And it's even deeper than that to put our mind into the fact that it might be that every person lives in his own world, that it's like different dimensions in a way. It's true, we can touch, we can meet, we can speak, we can hear, we can feel each other, but the experience of that stone, of that meeting, of that building, of that moment, is in 100% different than the others. Another person will enter the same door that you just did and he will feel something totally else. Actually, he will do something totally else and actually he is entering a total different place in his being, in his perspective, in his understanding, in his reality also. For you, it's the place that your father told you to go to, and for him, it's his friend's house. It's a different thing. It's a different concept. It's a different world. It's a different lifetime. And the creator, the maker of the universe, he is with, with each and every one of us in 100%. He is fully there with you while he is fully there with me, while he is fully there with them, with all of them. And not only now, in the present time, that we are experiencing that great feeling of being one with him and understanding and seeing and enjoying his supervision. He was also in that place since ever. He's not only walking with you in the streets. He is always in the streets, in all the roads, in all the ways. And like today, it's a highway. Today, that road is like built already and everything is so flashy and nice and beautiful and new and renewed. But 500 years ago, there were mountains here. There were valleys over there. And Hashem was there as well. When the deers were walking, when the foxes were walking at night, and now it's a city, there's no one fox except in the store. There is no fox, you can't find no foxes here, no deers in the city. But even back then, also 2,000 years ago, when there were like road travelers that were walking with their some kind of sack on their back, and looking for water for two weeks or three months already. He was there. He was here. He was with us. Because the Maker Himself, He is the blessed infinity. He is the Havaya Baruch Hu. He is the present time. He is beyond time. He is eternity. He is infinity. And when we want to connect ourselves to Him, it cannot be based on our needs. It's true. When you need Him, He's close to you. He's close to you if you'll call Him with truth. He will always stand by you. He will come. He will reveal His presence to you. He will shine His great light. He is there with you when you need Him. But He is always there anyway. And when we want to connect ourselves to the Maker of the universe, we can do it in higher levels than the levels of our needs of our desires, of our pain, of our struggles, even though that they can also go to the depths, even though that those moments of awakeness, of pain that is calling us, or pleasure that is like filling us with, with gratitude to Hashem's existence, and thank you Hashem, like my heart is full. A real servant, a real 
person of faith is a person that never walks away from Hashem. He cannot meet Hashem in the synagogue for half an hour. He cannot meet Hashem when he finds himself in front of a very, of an, a very interesting book. He is attaching himself to Hashem in any moment of his lifetime and also in any aspect of his being. While he is alive, he is with Hashem. And then that person is enjoying the full blessing that Hashem's light can supply to a person. Because you become surrounded and everything is filling you with godliness from within. The path of the righteous people is a path that is eternal. It's an eternal path. And that's why true righteous people are not scared to die. Because they know that we're just crossing to, from one dimension to the next. From one world to the world to come. The world to come means the world that is coming. Anyway, like a person that is sailing on a boat. And you can live on, on, the, on the boat. You can enjoy, you can walk, you can eat, you can drink. It's like you can have full life over there on the boat, in the boat. No problem, but the boat is sailing. sailing. There is a shore, there is a destiny. So we can fill our lives here with many obligations, with many like hobbies, with many purposes, with many great things, but... The Creator was here before we were born. And He will stay here for eternity. Forever, for good. And on that, the verse is saying, on Adam Marishon, and that is a very big and deep understanding about the nature of our creation, that like the true righteous people said and expressed, Achor vakedem tsartani. Vatashet alai kapecha. The verse is saying, Achor vakedem tsartani. You created me from the back, back and front. Back and front. Achor, it's the back, and front. So we're going to explain a little bit more. Vakedem, from Kadima, from in front of us. Tsartani, you created me. Vatashet alai kapecha. And you put your hand upon me, above me. You are covering me. You are my shelter. You're protecting me. You're being protective with me. What does it mean, achor vakedem tsartani? In a Kabbalistic aspect, it is talking about the main creation of the soul of human beings. In the beginning of their creation, of our creation, the form of Adam and Eve was not divided to male and female. It was one person that was structured with face and back. The male side was in the front and the feminine side was in the back. And then when that sleep came to Adam and he fell asleep, the Creator made that surgery and divided, took out Eve from Adam, Chava from Adam. In that moment, we became people that we have only the front. Means that we don't have a second face in the back. Our back now is only because of that dissect, because of that dividing, because of, of that cut, of that surgery. You know how you will get back to the completion? How you and your soulmate will become one again when all the world will be around you means like the blessing that we say on the wedding day that the Hashem will bless the bride and the groom as they were blessed in Gan Eden Mikedem in the Garden of Eden in the time that was before of time before creation begin before we started to count so in that time what was so great that we're blessing the couple to have the same blessing that they had over there that they were alone 
There were no competitions. There were no other men, no other women, no distractions. It was like Adam and Chava, and they had their own world. Everything was clear just for them. When the couple will come to that place, and how can we come to that place? Out of joy and out of happiness, we cannot do that. We're not able to do that. And soon we're going to understand why. The way to do it, unfortunately, but that is the way, is out of life troubles. Why? Because when life troubles are surrounding the couple, attacking them from every angle, and there is no way out, the male and the female will stand like two special forces soldiers, back to back, holding their weapons and fighting their lives out of the situation. When you're back to back with your soulmate and you're fighting for your life like there's no one else in the world except for you and the one that you are backing up now, only in that situation, you're back. You're back together. And then the illumination of Adam and Chava, real connection. You want to hear something? I'll tell you. My, my heart. I'm an honest person. And if you don't judge me favorably, so I couldn't care less of what you think about me. I'll tell you the truth. Chidushim like that, to hear words like that, it's worth to come down to this world to hear that. And even for me. Because I also came to that understanding with you right now. I do have a lot of knowledge that brought me to climb to my next level to be able to express it. But we, as public, experience that chidush, now that understanding, together. And just to come to those deep understandings together in the world of Hashem, in a holy place that Hashem is calling us, hey guys, come, let's gather in the synagogue, let's learn the Torah, let's see computers, phones, let's open the, 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 the net, let, let's, let's reunite, let's find Hashem, let's learn Torah, let's find our souls. When that call is being heard, our souls are waking up to see that. And then that light is coming, you see that the Creator is blessing you. He fills your vessels. Like you said, you know what, it's cold outside, it's late already, but you know, I'll, I'll go. Any case, in any way, I'll go, I'll daddy, I'll put my time, I'll, take, I'll put my money, I'll put the effort, I'll make time. And you prepare vessels, even just to open the phone and to search for like the class, just to put yourself a reminder that there's a class you want to watch. Even just to do that, it's a dedication. It's a real effort, in a way. If you are not judging yourself favorably and you're blaming yourself and you're busy in your own self-criticism, Everything that you will do, even the greatest things that you will do in your life, won't matter to you. And you will downgrade them, and you will not appreciate them, and you're going to disrespect yourself, God forbid, and you won't enjoy your fruitful actions. But when your eyes are aimed to the truth, you will see that yes, there is a dedication, even in just watching a video online, that it seems very easy, but it's not always that easy. And also that is a worthy act, an effort that sends a blessing. If you wouldn't put a vessel, if you wouldn't put a cup, you wouldn't enjoy the illumination. So if you sat and you watched a class and you had a reward, you were rewarded, enjoyed that class, it helped you to come higher and closer to Hashem, to understand something, it means that water came into your cup, came into your vessel. So it means that you did something to put a vessel. So you are worthy for the blessing. It's very important for us to understand that we do have a role here on earth. The creation is amazing. The Kabbalah is fantastic. The main thing is to understand that we should really have the merit from heavens, that Hashem will choose us, handpick us with His holy tweezers to pull us out from the darkness for us to have <coughs> kosher and worthy teachers or ourselves to have the merit really to come to the right conclusions out of our learning. Because just to spend time in some Kabbalah center, in some Kabbalah class, 
it's not a guarantee for your spiritual development not at all at night the head of all demons that his name is Ashmedai that is a horrible dark force is going down to the sources of water of Torah and with his impure hands he is dipping drowning all his contamination into those wells of Torah and in the morning when the holy scholars are going to learn Torah and the people are coming to search Hashem and to find answers to their questions inside the Torah in the Torah world if they purified their actions Zaha, they became pure Naset lo sam chaim. So the Torah that they will drink will become potion that will give them life. But if lo zacha, if they do not have the merit, they did not correct their actions, they did not put the vessels, the worthy vessels for the light of Hashem, then ha Torah naset lo sam mavet. The Torah becomes a little poison that can kill him, Sam Mavet, drug of death, from Torah learning, from Halakha learning, from Gemara learning, from Zohar learning, from Kabbalah learning, from Hasidut learning, from each and any kind of basic Torah to the highest level of Torah. It can become poison in what it depends in the intention of your heart. And therefore it's written, that there is an avera that is lishma that the intention of the person while sinning is for Hashem and it will be considered as a higher act than a mitzvah that you're obligated to keep but while keeping it your heart was not aimed lishma you did it from the wrong reasons you had a twisted motive to keep that mitzvah. The person might be punished for keeping that mitzvah, while the other one will be blessed for keeping that violation, for violating that mitzvah, for criming. You want to hear a basic example for that? Moshe Rabbeinu took the holy tablets, handmade by Hashem, and broke them down with no commandment. There was the will of the Maker that the Torah will be given to the people of Israel. But Moshe took a decision to take the first revealing of the Torah, handmade creation by Hashem, sapphire stone that was created before creation, before time. It was waiting in the eternal world for the moment of giving, the unconditional love in the Torah, first speech of Hashem to a public, to the public of Israel, the holy tablets, the Ten Commandments, handmade by Hashem. The tablets are the handmade of Hashem. And also the writing was the writing of Hashem. Elohim himself wrote the letters. He wrote the Ten Commandments. He carved the letters, the light, into the sapphire stone of those tablets. And Moshe is holding those tablets and smashing them down to the ground with an intention to do something good. Who will dare to do such a thing? To torn a Sefer Torah, to break a Sefer Torah, to break the tablets, who, who would dare touching them? When Uzzah, one of the soldiers of David Melech, touched the, 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 the ark, just touch it because the ark was tilting and he thought that it's about to fall. And he sent the hand just like that. He wanted to protect, to honor the ark that was holding the tablets within it, the broken tablets. And the second tablets that Moshe made as a replacement for the first were held and kept in the ark, in the holy ark. And when it was moving and he assumed, he thought, he was afraid that it's gonna fall. 
He wanted to protect and honor the tablets. So he touched the ark just to hold it from falling. He died. You cannot see Hashem and stay alive. The light of the tablets, the light of the ark, are not things that normal people can relate to, can understand. When the people of Israel received the first commandment and the second commandment, in both of them, Hashem was talking to them. Their souls, all the public of Israel, all their souls went up to heaven. They died. When Hashem said, Anuchi Adonai Elohecha, they died. All the public of Israel died. And Hashem brought the dew, right? Dew? Dew. Tal, Tchiyat Ametim, of the resurrection of the dead, and revived them. We all woke up back to life. Whoa, a new world. And then Hashem said, Lo yelecha Elohim acherim al panai. You won't replace me with no other God. Won't believe in no idols. And all. Again, the souls went up. We died. All the public of Israel went down. On the ground, dead. You cannot experience such holy experiences and stay alive. The body does not have the ability to stand that light. We all died. But Hashem's mercifulness, Hashem's kindness, Hashem's unconditional love revived us, brought us back to life. Here you see an act of a person, Moshe, that he was the one that just fought with the angels and argued with Hashem and grabbed the tablets from Hashem. Like the, the Midrash is saying, Gavar kocho shel Moshe. Moshe's power overpowered Hashem. Hashem, was, Hashem lost in the argument to Moshe. Moshe was stronger than Hashem in their argument about the tablets. Hashem was sitting and reading the tablets in the place that is called Marom. And Hashem was in Marom alone. Hashem is only with, with the Torah in the place that is called Marom. In the place that is called Marom, there is no entrance to people. There is no entrance to angels. No one can get there. Suddenly, Moshe is already there. How did he do that? We don't know. But he did. He went to that place, Alita la Marom, a place that there is a verse that is saying that Hashem is in Marom alone. But Moshe went up to Marom. Suddenly Hashem is not alone. Moshe is changed. Like, what are you doing? How, where do you get that power? I'll tell you where to get that power. And the reason why I will tell you how you get those powers is because that I want to activate those powers that are installed inside of you. Because inside of us there is that point of Moshe inside of our hearts. Moshe was a person that could not care less of anything else except for the truth. That is, that's it. He was the man of truth. He was a person of truth. And no matter what, he will break walls for the truth. Yoshua Binun, the main student of Moshe Rabbeinu, he comes to a situation that the day is not long enough and they need to keep fighting and there is a great war and the people need to continue winning, conquer the land of Israel. So he's saying, Shemesh begivon dom ve'yarech be'emek ayalon. The sun you should stop right there and the moon you're gonna stop right here and that's it. And that's what that happened. The sun stopped from its movement and the moon stop from its movement and the day from now and on is being lengthened until Yoshua Binun will finish conquered and fighting and winning that battle and they are just doing it and you're gonna ask but how but how can they listen Moshe was a tiny baby and he grew up to be Moshe and Tzipora, his wife, she was a little baby. And she grew up to be Tzipora, the wife of Moshe. Abraham was a tiny baby that was born in a house of non-Jewish people that were worshipping idols. His father was a priest for idols worshipping. He was a black magician. He was the worst of his kind. In the worst generation, he was the main dark magician that was serving Nimrod, that was the main villain of all generations. He was the most corrupted person on earth. 
ever existed. He was such a villain, such a rasha that we cannot understand. He was slaughtering babies on babies. When he heard there was a prophecy that Abraham is about to be, to be born, that a star will rise, that was Abraham. And that star will defeat the four kings. They saw a star in the sky that was breaking, smashing four other stars in the sky. One night, the wizards, they saw. And they came to Nimrod and they told him, Listen, there's a prophecy we just saw. A child will be born and he will destroy the kings. He will destroy your kingship. Since that moment and on, any child that was born, he was slaughtering him. He, didn't, he couldn't care less. He started to murder all the babies, each and every baby. Don't care. His babies, other people's babies. He's killing everyone. He doesn't look. He doesn't see. To that area, to that generation, Abraham was born. And he became the head of all nations, the head of all believers. By doing what? Searching for Hashem. It's written that Abraham Avinu was a child. His parents, they hid him in a cave. He wanted to, they wanted to protect him from Nimrod. When he was three years old, he went first time out of the cave. He went out and he saw the moon. So he realized, look, there is a God. It was an understanding. He started to worship the moon. And then the morning came and he saw the sun just came. And it's greater and its light is stronger. So he said, all right, so that's the king of the universe. And he worshipped the sun during that day. And then the moon came in the evening again. So he said, there is someone above that is running the show. It's not about the stars at all. And then Hashem revealed himself to him. And Moshe Rabbeinu walked in the desert of Sinai for 60 years of his life. He went out of Egypt when he was 20 years old. And for 60 years of his life, he was wandering in the desert. He went and he was a king in Africa. He was doing many things. And he got married with the daughter of Jethro, with Tzipora. Only when Moshe was 80 years old, after 60 years of loneliness, separated from his nation, separated from his family, from his sister, from his brother, from his parents, from his cousins, from all his beloved ones, from his entire nation that are suffering, in the age of 80, Hashem pulled him to a cave in the bottom of Mount Sinai. And over there Hashem revealed himself, shown himself to him in that great vision of the burning bush. That was the first time that he had a vision, that he saw Hashem. 80 years old. That's why it's written, Tzadik Katamar Yifrach. A righteous man is growing, is blooming like the palm tree. That it takes years for the palm tree to grow and to become fruitful. Also for the righteous man, for the righteous person. It takes years of honest dedication like the palm tree to be straight to Hashem. That you're going to have only one heart like the lulav in the top of the palm tree that is aimed straight to Hashem. It's the peak. That's why we call it lulav. Because lo lev. He has a heart. One heart. The palm tree has one center. Everything else are rings that are surrounding it. Layers on layers on layers that are surrounding and wrapping it. To be that amazing tree that brings such sweet fruits to the world. The dates. And that is the mission of any person. And it's installed inside our DNA. It's inside of you. Because if the maker put a godly soul within you, and how will you know? Okay, I want to know. I want to test it. How will I know that I have a godly soul within me? First of all, if you wouldn't have that soul, you would never in a lifetime hear me talking. That's 100% and evident. You wouldn't have the merit. People that does not have the merit, when they hear me talk, they're getting angry. They're losing it. Who is that? You need to see the comments. It's amazing. It's amazing. 
people saw today I spoke in Hebrew I made a live video on TikTok I spoke people are losing their minds and what am I saying we have a soul we have a godly soul I spoke about those subjects I just said Elohai neshama shenatata bitehora my God the soul that you gave me is pure you are a son of a this you're a son of a that all those amazing wordings expressing what the darkness of their spirits they cannot stand the light they rather to hide in their dungeons in their dark places to eat the leftovers of the garbage of the slime of earth that they belongs to that's where they belong they belong with the souls of Bil'am like that we are the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren of Abraham, of Yitzhak and Yaakov and we have their nature that they are merciful that they are kind that they are loving check yourself are you loving are you caring do you want to give do you care about other people are you sensitive to other people's troubles maybe not in full power maybe it's not exactly the 100% of your being you have your fears you have your traumas you have your 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 pressures you have your obligations that are distracting your mind day and night but in your essence in your being do you want people to succeed if the answer is yes so you belong here but there are people that the answer for them is definitely no no they couldn't care less no 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 they don't want you to succeed and the opposite is much right much more fit to their need and to their desire and to their passion they can see people crying people falling people suffering people being shot naked poor rejected evacuated from their houses into the pits into the holes being torn from their families and they're gonna laugh they will feel satisfaction they will feel that the day of their glory the day of their success is rising dark people dark forces belongs to the dark side belongs to the devil belongs to those dark forces that their future is to be cut from all their attachment to Hashem that it's written in the prophecy that Hashem will come chamutz begadim mi batzra with his white cloaks red from blood after slaughtering the Yetzirah cutting the name El Aleph Lamed God from the name Samech Mem Aleph Lamed that that is the name of the evil inclination cutting out all the holiness that was held by the Samech Mem soon I'm going to tell you another Chidush about that hopefully Baruch Mazkir Nishkachot the blessed one is the one who will remind all the things that we forgot and we might forget Hashem will take out uproot his holy name the connection to holiness and purity from the Samech Mem and will come back to us El is the name of Hashem that represents kindness kindness was abused kindness was taken by the Samech Mem by the devil and was used they're pretending to be kind they're pretending to be nice they pretend to be so gentle and loving and caring while slaughtering children, being pedophiles, doing horrible things, molesting, hurting, insulting, lying, and on and on and on and on and on. That's what they do all their lives. Now, that was the thing I wanted to tell you. Samich and Mim. Samech and Mem are the name of the evil inclination. Like we just said, Samech Mem, Aleph Lamed is his name today. And when Hashem will take the Aleph and Lamed away from, from that devil, so he will say Samech and Mem. What are Samech and Mem? Samech and Mem are two amazing letters that when they are written, Samech, regular Samech, is round like a circle, and Mem Sofit is like a square. Both those letters are written in the holy tablets. In the Ten Commandments, you have Samech and Mem. Both those letters, based on our understanding, what we've been taught, the tablets were not written 
the commandments were not written on the tablets like a scroll of Torah, like a Sefer Torah. The letters of the commandments onto the holy tablets were carved from one side to the other. There were tunnels of light that were crossing the tablets from one side to the other. Samech and Mem are two letters that has an empty space while being written, but while being carved, they have an impact within them. They have a stone standing, floating in the air of the Samech. If the Samech that was carved onto the tablet created a tunnel, so there is a piece of tablet, a piece of sapphire stone that must stand floating in the hollow air of the letter Samech and the square one in the middle of the ending Mem, of the Mem Sofit. So on the tablets it's written that Mem and Samech, Samech and Mem were standing in miracle. Only a miracle was helping those central parts of stone to float and to stand. And they're standing until today inside the tablets. They're floating in the space. That is a deep secret that is teaching us a great teaching, a very solid and deep understanding for us to have about the power of the Samech Mem, of the evil inclination. Like we said, his name is Samech Mem, same letters. Aleph Lamed is the name of Hashem that is added to him. When the name El, the name of kindness, is added to the Samech and Mem, so Samech and Mem are enjoying wonders, the kindness of Hashem. And they can exist. But when the letters Aleph and Lamed will be taken away, the Samech and the Mem are falling. They're not holding. And that will be the end of the Yetzirah, of, of the evil inclination. His power is coming only from the fact that there is kindness, kindness blend into his system. But when Hashem will take one step back and will say, hold on, who are you? What are you doing? And will confront him. You know the rude answer of the angel of death, of the evil inclination, what it will be to Hashem's trial? He will tell Hashem in that day of judgment, you sent me. I was only your messenger. I was the executor for your decrees. What do you want me from me? Why are you blaming me? I did what you told me to do. I didn't do anything except for what you told me to do. If you want to send me to hell, you should go to hell. That's the answer of the evil inclination to Hashem Itbarach, to the maker of the universe. But Hashem is telling him, I'm not judging you for what you've done. I'm judging you for enjoying it. On that I'm judging you. I'm not judging you for any of the things that happened. I'm judging you for your hatred, for your satisfaction from the sorrow and pain of the pure souls of Israel. This is unbearable. This is something that no person with a soul can stand. And this is our fight. We're not fighting our destiny. We're not arguing with Hashem's decrees. We cannot see those clowns laughing and being happy with our tests, with our challenges, with our pain. We cannot stand that. We are willing to walk in the valley of death with Hashem. Like King David said, Even when I walk in the valley of shadows of death, I won't see anything bad because you are with me. When Hashem is with us, whatever you want, you want. Hashem, we're with you. Ready to die for you all day long. If we need to die, there was never a nation that accepted death, general death, as the people of Israel. That were ready to sacrifice themselves like the souls, the pure souls of Israel. There was never a nation like that in the world. And we are such unique souls, 
such amazing souls. I will tell you a story. It's a midrash. It's an ancient midrash. And I am apologizing. I told that story many, many times before. But it's fascinating. It's an amazing story. It's an amazing expression of our true nature. Before creation, it's written that the Creator consulted with the souls and he asked them, what do you want to do in my world? What do you want to be your mission? What is your purpose? What is your passion, your desire? And based on what we accepted and took on ourselves, we've been sent to a place that is behind the curtain, that is after suffering from forgetfulness, cannot remember the acceptance that we took upon ourselves back then. But when we took the decision to come to this world, it was after we heard and understood what our, will, our mission will be. To go into the unknown, yes, but an unknown that was known before of time. So when the Creator called all the souls and gathered them together, He asked them, what do you want to do on earth? So the groups were divided. The, the public of souls, the sea of souls, were divided to groups, to, 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 to kinds. Some said to Hashem, we want to learn Torah. Some said, we want to pray to you all day long. Some said, we're willing to die, to be sacrificed for your name, for your name to be honored, to you, for you to have children that were willing to go all the way for honoring your name in Mesirut Nefesh, to die on Kiddush Hashem. There were souls that said, we're ready to suffer from poverty. Souls that said, we are even accepting on ourselves to see the destruction of the holy temples. Every section, every group accepted something powerful, meaningful on themselves to show their love to Hashem on earth. But there was one group that when Hashem asked them, what do you want to do? They said, we want to wait to the end. We want to be the last group that will be asking. So Hashem said, no problem, you can wait. After he gave the jobs and the missions to all the rest of the souls, he came to that group and told them, okay, what do you want to do? And those souls, they said, Hashem, we want you to tell us what you want us to do. We want you. We want to satisfy you in the way that you want to be satisfied. We want to do whatever you want us to do. So Hashem said, My children, you will be the souls that will come down to earth in the last generation. You will be the souls that will go down to the lowest place of them all, to the darkest generation of them all, to a place that my godliness will barely be seen, that it will be the darkest time of all ages. And from that place, you're going to call me. And when I'm going to hear your voice calling from the dark, I will come back to you. And when I will redeem you, I will redeem the whole universe with you. All the rest of the generations, the resurrection of the dead, all the redemption will take place when you will call me. Those souls are us. Those are us. We are totally lost. Totally. Even when we're learning, we don't understand what we learn. Even when we're praying, we're not sure that we did it right. Even when we're keeping Torah mitzvot, we're not sure that that is the right way to keep that mitzvah. We, in an illuminating day, we are doubting and questioning our existence. Are we really here? I know of people, someone told me, if you are 40 years old, or like uh, maybe 60 years old, I'll, I'll, I'll give a discount, he said 60. 60 years old and you woke up in the morning and your back is not hurt and your head is not dizzy, so you're probably dead. That's our situation. Dead, you're dead. <laughs> you don't feel no pain. <laughs> so probably you died. 
in reality, we're surrounded with difficulties, surrounded with obstacles, surrounded with darkness from all around, from all directions, 360 degrees. From that dark, there is only one thing we can do. To connect ourselves from within to Hashem. To call Hashem with truth. To be honest. To be truthful. To express our loyalty. To be as righteous as we can. To do the maximum that we're able to. While not breaking the vessels. While not missing the real true purpose of our being be truthful, to be ourselves. The Yetzer Ara, the evil inclination way of taking the person's mind from focusing the purpose of his being, using the tools and vessels that were given to him for the purpose of his being is to distract him from being himself, to think that he needs to copy other people, to pretend to be someone else, to desire to be someone else, to jealous other people. When he is able to distract you from being the one that you are, and he makes you think that the world is nicer than you, that other people are better than you, he made it. That's it. It's his day already. You're not going to do anything useful today. If you think that she is better than you, if you think that he is better than you, if you think that you are unable to do anything, that you are hopeless, that you are worthless, that you are nothing, and not because you're humble and you understand the greatness of the Maker, just because that you felt to judge yourself and criticize yourself and blame yourself and hate yourself for being Hashem's creation. He made you to be the one that you are. He chose the color of your eyes, the size of your nose, your height, your weight, your family, your friends. Everything was said by the maker of the universe, the creator of the world. Now if you're questioning it, but why my nose have to be like, because that's your nose. Because your nose, if you would have the wisdom that is called Chochmat Parzuf, to know the wisdom of the face of the portrait of a person, you would see all your ancestors in your nose. In your eyes, you can see all the souls that brought you in that tree of life, in that gigantic oak of your family tree. They're all being seen through your eyes. Your face is the reflection of all the premier generations that brought you. You're the outcome of the tree of life. You're the reflection of your branch. And you're judging the branch? You want to cut the branch that you're sitting on? It's crazy. That's the work of the devil. That's the work of the devil. And the devil worshippers are the ones that are convincing you that you have to be skinny. That to have a tiny nose is beautiful. And the Jews are the worst. And on and on and on. And today, even more than that, they're claiming that we're not even Jews. We're not Jewish. We are fake Jews. Oh, nice. Amazing. Such, a, such news before 70, 80 years ago, we were just horrible people. We were just the children of the devil. But now, no, 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 it's not enough. We are fake Jews. Israel is not the land of Israel. It's the ancient state of the Palestinians. It's the eternal capital of Palestinian people. Who are they? Where did they came from? You know where they came from? They came from the news. They came from social media. They came from the papers. They came from people's minds, twisted minds. To give a name to Arab people that are living here, every one of them, from a certain reason. One, because he was rejected from Saudi Arabia. One, because he was kicked out of Jordan. One, because he ran away from a plague in Egypt. And one, because he just found that land to be comfortable and nice. And yes, they were here. They were sitting here. They were eating. They were drinking. No problem. But they don't have no roots here. They came 200 years ago, 300 years ago. We. Our ancient ancestors conquered this land, took it from the seven nations. It belongs to us. All of our history is showing it. The Bible is the greatest testament for our connection to the land of Israel. No Palestinians. 
What's that? It's just crazy fake news. And they make people, Jewish people, doubt themselves. No, maybe we should share. Okay, open your house and bring a Palestinian family live with you in Magale Yavne, in Kiryat Gat, in Pardes Chana, in, in, in Manhattan, in your house in Manhattan. Bring a Palestinian family to live with you in your nice house in Monsi, in your beautiful um, ha house in uh, how, uh, Glendale, Glendale Park. Bring the families in. What happened? Why only in Israel? It's so easy, right? Yeah, let's cut Israel. Let's cut Yerushalayim. We're never going to do it. The crazy people who tried to do it, they all died. They all been kicked out. It's crazy. No one is allowed to touch Yerushalayim. No one is allowed to touch Israel. No one will ever be able to do that. And the ones that are like crazy brazen to do that, stupid people that are digging their own graves, it will never going to happen. It's our homeland. Our souls belong to this place. Thank you so much for coming. May Hashem bring His blessing into our hearts. Heal us. Strengthen us. Send blessings into all our actions and we will see the great redemption in our lives and in the lives of all our beloved ones. Emuna Project is a non-profit organization. To support this work, please make a purchase from our online store or donate through emuna.com. Thank you. My new book, Return to Your Root, is now on Amazon and emuna.com.